Game on. Hi everybody, thank you for joining me on today's edition of Glenn's Retro Show. Well, it's no surprise I like older video games. I mean, the name of my channel, after all, is Glenn's Retro Show. So I was really excited when Blaze had announced they're coming out with this little Pong unit. Now, I've already done a review of this on my channel, and also Willy over at Arcade USA, and Gen X Grown Up. And, you know, we're all pretty excited. We like these older games. And um, to have Pong and Breakout on a cool little, you know, Pong-looking machine here, I was very excited over it. Now, it only goes for about $25, $26. But it's only available in Europe, so I had to pay Amazon shipping over here, so it actually came to 50 bucks. Which again, I would not have minded paying at all to have a nice paddle game, Pong and Breakout on here. But I did have some trepidations about it, because I do know in the past, modern companies have not been using true potentiometers in these type of games. And most recent memory I can think about would be the Replicated New Wave Toys Tempest, which is still a great unit, uh, but it does not use a smooth rotating spinner, it's still a clicky spinner. And even more recently, would have been the Arcade 1-Up with their Asteroid 6-in-1 and their 12-in-1. It's not a true potentiometer. It's really a multiple selector switch. If anyone is old enough to remember the older TV sets, we had channel 2, 3, 4, 5. You had a click to go over. It's not a true smooth rotating spinner. But I was still excited, hoping that they had done the right thing. Got it. We all fired it up to find out. No. It is a clicky multi-selection switch so when you're moving a paddle instead of it going smooth up and down it actually picks certain points along the way and same with breakout instead of going smooth on the bottom it's multiple clicks going across and you know for 20 bucks can you complain about it i can yes because it's pong it's breakout if you're going to go this far to put a spinner in a potentiometer doesn't really cost that much so i knew there was going to be something i have to do to this now before i had a chance to do it my buddy Willie over at Arcade USA already opened this up and did all the work. He actually went out and he got a little potentiometer here. This is about $1.67 a piece, but they're smooth turning little potentiometers. And he actually opened this up. He did a small, quick little tutorial on his channel. I'm replacing the two spinners in here with one of these little guys. And uh, I talked to Willie and says, yeah, Glenn, do another one. Do a little more in-depth video about it. So yesterday I was going to do just that. Uh, we'll talk about that today, what I did here. But basically, as I started going through this, with this, I started thinking that, you know, there's going to be a lot of people who may purchase this, or enough, and maybe soldering is above their skill level, and the little work you have to do to modify the spinner here to fit this might be too much for some people. So is there anything I could do to improve what's already in here? And that's what today's video is going to be about. If you want to know how to put the potentiometer in here, I'll put a link down below to Willie's channel where he basically shows you pretty much how to do this. I mean, you don't have to do a little filing work to get it to, to go. But my video here is going to be not using this, so I wasted like $8. No, I'm going to use this for something else. Trust me, it's going to be used. But what I did here was I kept everything stock, took one little thing out of each one of the potentiometers, and now they are smooth turning spinners. Now, Willie using these is still an improvement. Because with the potentiometers that are used in here, actually the multiple select switch using in here, you have to kind of turn it almost two to two and a half rotations to equal what this thing will do in half a rotation. So when you're playing games like Breakout, Warlords, this is probably still going to be the better way to go because you want to only turn so far to make your guy move. So that's one still drawback to my design here is you're still going to have to turn further to get the same movement you would have gotten much sooner in, in Willie's uh, way of doing it. But the one advantage to mine is, you don't need to purchase anything, just a few minutes of your time, no soldering is required at all. It's just going to be opening this machine up and making a small change. So, I've rambled on long enough, so let's get into how we're going to turn these little clickies into at least free-spinning, smooth spinners. Let's have a look. Okay, here we have the uh, Pong by Blaze, which includes uh, 12 uh, video game classics and two uh, knobs, which are clicky knobs, not true potentiometers. But we're going to work on making this uh, better. 
Uh, again, uh, originally I was going to do something a little bit different. I was going to pretty much do a tutorial on how Willie had done his with a true potentiometer. But I found it a little way I think that most people will be able to do a lot simpler and give you most of the benefits. Again, you still will have to spin the spinner a lot further, but there will be no soldering involved with this. So on both sides of the unit, there's going to be some screws. We need to get under these uh, labels, so we'll work on getting these labels off. You don't have to worry about the label on the front here. It's just the two sides that we need to get off. And all we're going to need to do uh, to do that, just a regular hair dryer. Just put it on your high setting and high fan speed setting. And just let it sit over the decal. It won't ruin anything. It won't melt anything. But it will get the glue loosened up. And basically just pick a corner. doesn't matter which corner you pick. Uh, I used an X-Acto knife. Uh, a slightly duller X-Acto knife because I don't want to scratch anything in here just to start the prying of the decal. And once you get it up enough to get your hand on it, you can start just slowly lifting it up. So again, just take your time. You know, if, if it looks like the decal is not coming up, don't force it. When it's warm enough, the glue will slightly release it and you'll be able to get it up fairly easy. As you can see right here, once you get a corner started, I started right here, it'll start peeling up. Just keep heating it and it will literally just come right off. And when you go to put it back down, if like your main spot here you started on is not sticking too well, Heat that with the, uh, the hair dryer. The glue will soften again and it will adhere just fine. Trust me, it'll go back on. Now, these are not the same type of decals you would have gotten on the like the Myricade, uh, which are a lot thicker, but they're not like a, um, a basic fun decal. They'll just tear and fall apart. It is slightly robust uh, and it did come off without any tears whatsoever. Just take your time when you're pulling off. Always use the hair dryer to keep heating the glue as you go. Once it starts, and it'll be warm enough for the uh, the uh, hair dryer will keep it going fairly smoothly. And you can see it pulled up really good here. No glue or residuals stayed behind. It's all on the decal, which is where you want it to be. And we need to take out these three screws on both sides of the unit to get access to the insides. And just be careful because the decals that are heated, they're going to kind of curl a little bit. So I have it here on the, my uh, my dryer down in the basement, porcelain top and just let it set like this with a little piece of metal just holding them down in the corners just so they don't curl that's fine it's not actually underneath but you can see these will all uh, go back on just fine there's no tears whatsoever and again you have to do the same thing take out the four screws on the other side and once you take out all your screws you know put them in a container or leave them on a rug like me <laughs> just so you don't lose them uh, they're small screws you can see the uh, the black parts will lift right off uh, and the inside here is we're going to have to get access to. It's really just these tabs under here to get to the control panel. You can take it all apart if you wanted to, but it's really just those tabs you need to get access to. So you take off both sides, put them to the side. And uh, if you want, I did because I was curious, you can take out these four screws in the back just so you can kind of see what's inside the machine. It's really not necessary. But you can see right here we have our speaker and our charging circuit. It was, I mean, it's a fairly nice design. So, I mean... It's, it's funny that they took the time to, you know, make this all elegant and, and sit in really nice and that they cheaped out and, and didn't think at all to the most important interface of the unit here, um, which is a real shame. You can see it's a very neat design. The board sits in here really good. Everything is well thought out as far as all this goes. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sure it's not the people who engineered it. I'm sure it's actually the company who kind of limited what they could do because an engineer would definitely know to put in a proper potentiometer in there, or at least a better knob that they did. But everything else here looks, I mean, looks really, really neat and, and, and well thought out. So you can see here's our, just your charging circuit, your speaker, and your volume control is back here. And obviously your main board is up here. Just another shot of it. I mean, if you wanted to, you could put in a, a, a small Pi Zero very easily in here and put a couple of potentiometers and connect it up that way. But um, in any case, we'll go back to the main point of this video. So I didn't use the X-Acto knife. I'm just using this to point out. I used a small little plated screwdriver. You just need to pop this here, and the lid will literally come right up. It's very, very easy. So you can see it pops right up. Here's a screwdriver I used to get in there. You don't, you don't need to take off this front one at all. You can see, once you do it on this side and this side, this will simply slide and pull right up very easy. You don't have to take anything off the back if you don't want to. It really isn't necessary. I was just curious. And you can see there's enough, uh, there's enough cord length we can get access under here. And again, I mean, this looks really, really nicely thought out. They have the two clicky knobs here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here just so we can get a better view of that. Bring it down a little bit. 
So we'll take a look at this one over here. So we have our, our connector here, it's just three cables, our ground and the two spots on the on this. I can't I can't want to call it a potentiometer, but it's not. It's a multiple selector switch. And this is what we're gonna do. Now what Willie had done, Willie had taken this out completely and replaced it with a true potentiometer, which again is probably the best way to go. It'll give you the best overall experience. What I wanted to do here was show you something simple that anyone can do without any soldering skills whatsoever. So you can see they mounted it very well, very well thought out. The knob comes in through here, and this is what we're going to focus on. We're going to just basically take these screws off and get access to this little guy to fix our problem. Here's just another shot, a little bit closer up. You have your, your two spinners here. And again, another fault uh, that they did here, there is one action button for player one. They should have put a second action button for player two. Uh, you do have Warlords on here and some other games that you can catch the ball, but you need a button to do so. So that was another short-sightedness on it. So all we're going to do is, you know, pull off these two connectors again. There's no problems here, not soldered on. Just pull these two connectors out, and each one is only long enough really to get to their own. So it's really not going to be messing up putting it back on. But uh, very easy to get off. So we pop that off, and we're going to take out these two screws next. As you see, we got that out. We're just going to take out our two screws and put them in a safe spot so we don't lose those screws. And then I used a flathead screwdriver to slowly pry this down. Now, what they did here, again, the uh, I tried originally just trying to pry this off because I thought it was a, a clicky potentiometer, which it's not. Uh, but it's actually screwed in from the bottom, very reminiscent of the arcade one-up spinner, where the spinner top they have underneath locked in. So we have to basically just slide this off without uh, damaging this little piece that comes out here. And it will come up fairly easy. You can see there's a little nub. You don't want to break that off. You can see here's the top of the potentiometer, or top of the knob, I should say. And then the bottom is down here, and it locks it in place. You can still spin this. It won't fall out. Now, if you take this screw out and this screw out, obviously you could do that. Um, but again, I didn't go that route. So this is what we want access to right here, this little device right here. And this is it. And again, it's not a potentiometer. It's a multi-selectable switch. So there's a basically a notch that locks in here, then locks in here, then locks in here. So if you ever used a, a mouse, which I'm sure you have, in between your two mouse buttons, there was usually a wheel. And the wheel, as you move it, you feel it, there's little notches, little clicks. That's basically what this device is here. That's what they used. Um, they could have went very easy to do the right thing, but instead they went this route and they saved maybe 70 cents per unit. Uh, but you know, if, if they simply put in something here not clicky, but I'm going to show you right now, if they'd done this from the beginning, most people wouldn't have even cared and they would have lived with it. But because of this, they really make it so you don't like the device. So here's just the back side of it, and this is how we're going to get, get access to this device. Again, we're not going to do any soldering, we're not going to do any modification anywhere else except for this little guy right here. And the only thing we need to get into this is a small screwdriver or something small and flat to pry open this metal. So here's another shot of it here. It's kind of hard to see. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I think I have another shot a little bit later too. I'm gonna to zoom in real close. So on this side, I'm gonna go back. Actually, let me go back one real quick. So on this here, when you look at it, there'll be plastic, which is the black on one side, and there's just silver on this side. There are one, two, three, four little, I guess, little hold-on points. All you need to do is take a flathead screwdriver, stick it up top here, and you're, you're gonna bend it out a little bit, but that's okay. Let it bend out. You can bend out here, bend out here, bend out here, bend out here. Then you can basically pull this back a little bit, which will be the next photograph. So once you pull it back, this is our culprit right here. This right here is, well, I'm going to pull that in a second. It's actually a ring with a notch. And that notch is what locks into all these little grooves. Once we take that out, this will become a smooth turning spinner. So again, the metal gets pulled out. I have another picture I think is better, but I just bent these out and pulled it back a little bit just to get access to this ring. And this is the ring. This is what you're going to pull out of there. And it'll be right on top, so it's not uh, going to be too hard to get. But you can see, that's our problem right here. Why they built this thing with the device that has this in here confounds me. It truly confounds me because it's absolutely ridiculous and a complete disregard to how this machine should play. If you want to cheap out use a mouse roller wheel, at least have the manufacturer take out this part. So it would have been smooth spinning, and again, probably no one would have cared. But this little notch right here is what makes this thing play, well, it still plays kind of bad because it's not designed to spin 
and move as far as you spin it, but it definitely also adds to it. No one wants a clicky spinner in a game like Pong or Breakout. Here's another shot of the uh, unit here. Let's see if I get a close-up of it here. And it's just hard to see. My, my cell phone is not the best camera uh, in the world, but uh, we have to get in it. Maybe another picture that's better. Let's go to another picture here. This might be a little bit better here. So this is me actually closing it back up. So once you've bent those out and you take out that little metal clip, you're just gonna push this back together. The gear will uh, come through, or the, or the hole for the gear will come through here. Then just take a pair of Nino's pliers and just gently compress them back down. See this bit that bent out here? Once you compress them back down, it'll fit in just as fine as before and it's just as good as new, except you can now spin this freely with no clicks. And that's it, no soldering, nothing else. Here's a, a good photograph. Maybe I can zoom in a little bit better on this one. I can look at that so just take a flathead screwdriver and press it in here and here and you're gonna bend out this just far enough you can bend these four out just far enough to put a screwdriver in here and pry this apart now, it's not even pry once you take these off you could probably use your fingernail to separate the two don't go too far back as you can see they're soldered here but they will definitely be okay with you bending them out enough to pull out that ring and then push it back in and you know those pliers to press these back down and now you've turned this from a, a lousy clicky spinner to at least a free flowing spinner, even though you still have to do twice the work to get it to move and the amount of space you'd want it to move. And again, that's where if you want to go that route, you would have to go with Willie's solution over Arcade USA to completely release, uh, replace this with a true potentiometer. And let's see if I got another better shot of it here. Yeah, there we go, that's a much better shot, look at that. So this is what you want. You can see it, there's that notch. So once you bend these four back, you can easily pull this apart. Again, they're soldered in, so don't go too, too far. But you can see I pulled it a pretty good amount here. And just use something like even a toothpick just to lift this up and pull this out. The majority of the hardware is down below. You don't have to worry about it. This is what you want out. This stupid little ring is what you want to have out right here. And you can't miss it because everything here is, is, is black plastic. This is the only thing that's metal. Just lift this ring out, and then you can fold the device back together and work on your uh, your other joystick. So you can see I did use, at this point, a uh, uh, an X-Acto knife. And you can see I'm lifting it out. That's all I'm doing. I got the X-Acto knife going right here just to lift this stupid, stupid, ridiculous thing that I, I keep saying it, but it really bugs me that a company makes a device like this and allows this type of device to be put in. It's like we're idiots, and it really does bug me. I'm sorry about that. But if you're going to make something like this, and you're going to cheap out, at least take out the stupid ring that makes it clicky. I mean, it, it, that really does bug me when you work on these things. And you can see it's just pulling right out. It's not hard. It's not difficult at all. It will come right out. And then you can fold the device right back together. Which is, now you can see right here, I'll zoom in again. You can see the ring is removed. And it's just the plastic here. There's metal below, which is the actual, I guess it's kind of like a potentiometer, um, but it won't be clicky. The one difference is the resolution of it is not as good as Willie's solution, so that's why I have to do twice as many spins to make it move. But in all the games, aside from Warlords, it's acceptable. With doing my solution here, Warlords is still pretty much unplayable because you can't move around fast enough. But to be honest, you want to play Warlords with a friend, and you can't play that anyway because they're missing a button. So you can still at least play, you know, Pong, Breakout and those other games on here, which will become much, much more enjoyable in my opinion. Uh, so again, this was just a very simple solution uh, that you could do without any type of soldering. It just takes a little bit of your time. If you want to do it the right, I don't, not even the right way, the better way would be to go over to Willie, uh, Willie with Arcade USA, which I'll put a link down below, which you can follow his solution. It will require about four or five dollars of money to buy new potentiometers. You are gonna have to solder and you are gonna have to modify the bottoms of these to accept the potentiometer. But he did it, you have his video down below, take a look at it. But if you just wanna do something really simple, quick, to make it feel better, and in my opinion, definitely play better than it did before, at least better than before, this is something you could do with just, a, took me about, honestly, a whole process, we got 15 minutes. Okay, so I closed this thing back up. Let's see if we get it back a little bit further here. You can see right here and here, are the two little devices I took out of those crappy little selectors they use for potentiometers. They're out here. So let's turn this thing on. 
and right now these are both now non-clicky they're not uh, ex actually you know really good encoders either so again these are not gonna be as good as what Willie put in his that's a true potentiometer these are basically the mouse wheels those little rollers you have in the center that have clicky feels to it I just ripped them out but we'll do a two-player game of Pong and again Willie had very little movement he had to go to uh, make the you know the dial move mine's gonna be a lot further than that obviously because it's the same ones that are in here but it should still be better than before So again, they, uh, you still have a, a, a far uh, rotation of travel here, I guess I should say. Um, but it definitely is a lot better than it was before with those clickers locking you into specific spots. You definitely have more freedom of movement. But you do have to see turn quite a bit. But it just feels a lot better. And there was no soldering involved. You didn't need to purchase anything new. The only thing you needed, needed is a hair dryer. Uh, to peel off delicately your side decals, which I'll show you in a second, went on again fairly well. You know, if you look, if it didn't look super, super close under the microscope, you'll never know that I took them off. And, uh, but it feels a lot better. It definitely feels like this is something that they should have done initially. If you're going to use these really crummy multi-selector switches, at least have the manufacturer who's selling you them pull out these little things in here so you don't have those, that clicky feel. Because I'm going to be honest, that's the first thing I noticed, and a lot of other people noticed as well, uh, like Gen X growing up and, and really open at Arcade USA. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't have opened it. I would have left it be. If it came to me like this, I'd probably be like, okay, it's not as, you know, the it's, it's not as good turn-wise, but at least it's not a clicky spinner. And that's exactly what they gave us. But as you can see, uh, just a little time. It took me about 15 minutes to, you know, heat up the decals and slide them off easily. Uh, open it up and then just remove those little clips, but I would say now I'm gonna leave it alone I'm not gonna go further and, and remove these and put in true potentiometers uh, For right now for what it is a little $20 device. I think now it plays well enough Even though yes, you do have to turn your hand quite far for the travel. I'll take that as still a win Breakout feels a lot better as well you don't have to be locked into a specific spot, even though I, I still stink at the game. And I don't have to go click, 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 click. I can now move very freely, very smooth. But again, it's not as good as what Willie did with his, with a, a much less travel he needs to do than I do here. But I would say this is acceptable. You know, if I had gotten this originally this way, never would have opened it, never would have cared. Night Driver is, is playable now. Uh, you know, it's a very simple game. But again, you're not being these little clicky, ooh, as I crashed my car. It just feels better. It just feels more like it should have felt. Of course, again, Warlords it still has one button. So only, it's really not as playable. It would be they should have had two buttons here to capture the ball. But we'll still try a two-player game. Start it up. And here's where Willie's modification will make this game much better. Because you got to spin it way too much to get the travel you need. But the other games I think are made much more playable. This uh, Warlords with this encoder is still not ideal. You see, you have to go, you have to turn it, let's see, one, two, three times. One, two, three times. That's way too much uh, to have to turn. In a game like this, we have to be very, very fast. But, you know, it's going to add a lot more skill to it. And actually, I'm barely doing anything, and I'm kind of winning. So, <laughs> how am I to complain? Yeah. You see, here, I can, like, capture the ball, hopefully. There we go. See, I capture the ball. Now, there's no way for player two to do that. I can capture the ball. Player two can't. So, it's a, that's another oversight. And it would have been nice to give two buttons here 
and allow these to link up so you can actually have two of these. Play, if you could play four player war warlords, that would have been amazing. But in any case, I hope you watched the little tutorial video. Um, it just, I didn't want to go, actually I really did want to replace them completely. But I started thinking about it. For other people, how are they going to do it? And really all you need to do is rip these horrible little, little things out of here. These little guys. And it just makes it better. Um, of course, you can still do what Willie did, but I figured, you know what? Most people won't have the ability to solder or to work on fixing these to make it fit, uh, fit to the potentiometer properly. So I figured I'd just do a simple one and be done with it. And I'm okay with it at this point. Um, again, I'd probably want to play Warlords with one person anyway. Um, definitely adds to the challenge. You really have to turn it pretty far to get to do it. But for the other games, it's really not bad. So, I really got to thank you guys for watching. I hope this tutorial here helped out somebody. Uh, if not, you can always go over to Willie over at Arcade USA and see how he did his uh, potentiometer replacement. Who knows, maybe one day I'll change my mind and want to take this off again. You can see the decals when I'm pretty well. Um, they lined up well enough to where I'm just really not going to be bothered anymore. That's it. So that's it. It's not incredibly difficult. You are going to need, obviously, a hair dryer to heat this. Take your time when heating these decals. They will come off. Uh, I basically used a, a, an X-Acto knife just to get it started. You have to be very careful you don't nick anything. And they pull off really easy. And to be honest, I put them on fairly well. Um, unless you really look close at it, which people like me do. I can see it's not perfect as it was. But to the normal person, the normal human being, you would never know it took these decals off. They're not the same thick decals that uh, my arcade uses. Those suckers you could take off and put on a piece of cake. These are definitely thinner, but they are like, uh, it's almost like a fiber going through them. So they're dead robust, they're not going to tear. So they came up fairly well. And the, the actual doing the modification is not hard. Again, it's just a little time and that's it. But now you will get a very smooth spinning potential. I'm going to pick another game here. Actually, I'll start this one up here real quick. And, you know, it's, it's much better. But again, you have to kind of turn much further. It's one, pretty much two spins to get it to go where Willie would just take half a turn. So that's a small price to pay, I think, to have something you don't have to solder. But in any case, I did hope you liked this episode. And if you did, please give a like, share, subscribe. And also, my end credits, I have a lot of other YouTubers, a lot of other content creators that do a lot of hard work, make some great videos. Please give them a look, a like, a share, and a subscribe as well. I'm sure they would appreciate it just as much as I do. So once again, thanks for watching, and again, no matter how you play your game, as long as you're having fun, and game on.
adds a tiny arcade fan page. Remember, don't admire people too much. They'll disappoint you. Sit, Blue Blue, sit. Good dog.